It's been a race of attrition. It's been a whittling down process for the peloton today. It's been very difficult for any rider to try and attack and stay out front. But at the moment, Yonezaguri and Sergio Higita have a lead of 12 seconds into the final six kilometers. They're sharing the workload well, these, uh, these two out front. And for Higita, coming back from illness, this is a, uh, a good stamp of authority heading into Itzulia, the tour of the Basque Country. You see the gear he was in, not even on a 5% drag, uh, with a slight tailwind, big ring halfway down the block. Soler now trying to come across, desperately trying to close this gap down. This sort of gap is a really difficult one. When you look up on this sort of drag, 10 seconds doesn't look that far. You get up out the saddle and you put in a big attack to try and jump across. You get about a quarter of the way and then suddenly realize 10 seconds is a long way. As he looks around and looks for some help. But the problem is everyone's on the limit right now. Izaguirre looking very, very comfortable. It was numerous attacks that eventually led him to uh, the successful breakaway attack. And you can see there's no real cohesion behind. There's lots of huge accelerations in, but no one really consistently keeping up the chase. Yeah, this is the problem. As soon as you jump across to an attack like this, you get to the wheel and Soler will look around and say, give me a turn. But you can't because you've just jumped across a gap and put in a big effort to close him down. And so, as you say, once the group rolls back together, someone that's been sat on the back suddenly feels great and puts in a big attack. And that process continues, but it doesn't, on the whole, bring the gap down to two riders who are working well together out front. Just need to roll through, get together that chasing group and just keep things a little bit steadier and try and reduce that gap. And then if they can, jump across to the two riders on that final climb. That final climb coming with 2.3 kilometers to go. It's a short, steep climb, only 600 meters long but with an average gradient of 11.4 percent maxing out at 16 percent it's the real last uh, difficult point in this race in in terms of uh, ascent but they have a tricky descent to go as well Soler finding himself on the front of that chasing group Schelmoser is there as well as Richard Carapaz Corbin Strong is leading the chase behind for Israel Premier Tech problem is with the speed this high it's so difficult to take back any time um, the group isn't large enough uh, a large peloton might be able to take back um, a small amount of time on on two riders when the speed is this high but there just isn't that group cohesion like you said to uh, come together and really make the most of it they're going 80k an hour how much faster do you, can you go in reality to really close down the gap and it's holding around about nine ten seconds Soler looks great but he's had enough he's flicking the elbow Corbin Strong coming through there. Carapaz as well. And all the others don't want to do a turn. Soler is looking around thinking, well, why should I do all of the work here? Because he's been on the front predominantly for the last few kilometers trying to do the chase. Exactly. And the front two riders are on to that final climb now. Here goes Izagira straight to the front. Izaguirre, we've seen that he's looked strong. He's been in this position before. He's already had a victory at the Grand Premio. Miguel Enderain, Sergio Higuita is trying to follow the uh, the former Spanish champion. As you can see, the duo, pedal rev for pedal rev, matching each other. And uh, at behind, it's still Movistar who are doing the chasing. The ten riders in this group, they're onto the lower slopes of this climb. And Izaguirre, he puts in another acceleration. Is this the final nail in the coffin for Sergio Higuita? Can he follow Jan Izaguirre at the moment? Izaguirre, he puts it into another gear. He opens up uh, another bike length as you see all of the fans cheering on the local rider. Doesn't look like there's enough firepower in that chasing group for anyone to jump across to these leading two riders. And Izaguirre has really opened up the gap now. 
He's cresting the uh, top of this one in around 50, 60 metres time. He's onto that concrete section of road. He's got to go to the top of here and then a right-hand turn round the pole and then he'll be on to that final tricky descent. But that's a decent gap that he's got over Higuita now. Higuita, it looks like his day is done and uh, has he been caught by Schelmoser? And Schelmoser has tried to make a move on this steep gradient here from behind. Andreas Kron trying to come across as well and at the moment Schelmoser is chasing down Jan Izagiri from Kofidis. He last he... won this race in 2016 and Agita, there you go, he just comes round that left hand bend. Just got to keep things smooth down here. Um, keep his speed through these corners, get all his braking done in a straight line, get off the brakes through the apex of these corners, carry the speed, holding the gap now to Higuita. Just one kilometre to go now for Izagiri. It's a long descent down into the finish of Estea and the leader is Jan Izagiri. He won this race back in 2016 and it's a tricky descent and a running into the finish. Higita is chasing down the man from Kofidis. He takes a look behind him. The gap is around two seconds, three seconds. Can the, uh, the man from Colombia and Bora Hansgrohe come back and try and take his first victory of the season? Just this final right, left flick. This is the last really technical part of the descent that he's got to get through. And then it's just a slight left hand for him. Guita just feel like the gap's a little bit too much for him to close in this final 250 metres. Into the final 200 metres and Higita is still motivated to try and catch Jan Izagiri. But Jan Izagiri, he's already cheering. He knows he's going to take this. It's going to be his second victory here at the Gran Premio. Miguel Enderain, the home winner, takes the victory for the second time. He punches the air. Higita in second. Coming in for third. Who is going to hang on? Matthias Skelmoser of Trek Segafredo. He takes a look around. He's going to round out the podium. 13 seconds in arrears and uh, Andreas Kron and the rider from Equipo Kern Farmer. That looks like uh, Roger Adria coming in for fourth and fifth. Just small groups coming in, the two EF riders together there. So much work put in by EF. Olisi coming in there for UAE. Izakira. Taking the congratulations today. What a ride. He looked absolutely fantastic on that really draggy climb where he put in multiple attacks and then just was the strongest on that final kicker between him and uh, Higuita. See Chris Harper coming in there for Jaco Alula. Good ride from him today. Well, we said he did look very strong on the multiple attacks that he did, and uh, he was able to hold on to the finish. A very, a very popular winner, I would say. You can see all the riders coming to congratulate him. Big smiles. And as ever, the professional straight into uh, the post-race interviews. This was the uh, the final 100 metres already celebrating. He knew that Sergio Higuita was ne uh, never going to be able to catch him at this point. He takes a look around. Delight for the fans who've lined this uh, this finish line all day, waiting to uh, to cheer on and see the finish. Fantastic ride from the man from Kofidis, Jan Izagiri, picking up his second win in the Grand Premio, Miguel Enderain. Sergio Higuita, his previous best result here was third, so he's making his way up the podium, Ian. That's one way of looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he'll be disappointed to come so close and just miss out on that very final kick. Um, but Jan Izagiri, what can you say? just looked the strongest on the day and he was uh, able to make that count today.